Hi guys, uh, it's time for another equipment review. Uh, this time I've got a Yokogawa DL850 scope recorder, which is sort of a combination oscilloscope and uh, chart recorder. Uh, let's have a look at the unit. Uh, it feels very, very good quality. Uh, as an example, just look at the handle. They have a viscous damper on it. Handles all aluminum. Um, yeah, this. You can plug in uh, modules into this, different types of sampling modules. This one's got, uh, it's got 100 megahertz, 100 mega samples per second, 12 bit, 10 meg sample, 12 bit, 1 meg sample, 16 bit. Uh, those are all isolated. You, all the grounds of the uh, PNC connectors are isolated from uh, the from earth ground, so you can make floating measurements. There's a uh, multi-channel uh, uh, sampling module. Uh, 16 channels. Well, it doesn't sample simultaneously, it samples them all in sequence. And you can go 5 kilosamples per second total when all channels are enabled. Um, there's high voltage input modules. Um, and there's a frequency uh, sampling module too. And there's some other, uh, other ones I'll have to look up later that you can get. Uh, on the other side, I.O. connectors. Has standard uh, Ethernet USB. I think you can plug uh, USB flash drives into it. You can save data to SD cards. This one doesn't have the option, but you can plug in an, uh, an eSATA, eSATA hard drive into it and save data directly to that, up to um, I think 1.5 terabytes capacity. Um, VGA out, some external clock to synchronize sampling, trigger in, and of course power and switch. This unit also has a uh, 160 gigabyte internal hard drive for saving waveforms and for saving uh, live data too. Here's a list of all the modules you can get for this. There's various sample rates of analog, you can, uh, tank of temperature, strain gauge, acceleration, frequency, a logic analyzer module, I think with 16 channels, and a CAN uh, decoder module. There we go, it's booting up. panel looks uh, pretty nice. It's similar to the uh, DL2000 series I'd done a review on before. Some sort of musical relay clicks as it runs through self-test. There we go. And now let's see if we can make it this Play something. I've just got it connected right now to uh, line voltage on channel 9 and frequency is also connected to uh, line frequency. Let's just try to get a measurement of that. After restoring it to the default setup, all the channels are on, so let's just start turning off channels we don't need. And looks like we have to also set it to a single window if we can. Format one window. Now we can change the scaling. We need to make it trigger to simple. There we go. Source channel nine. There we go. Too bad, pretty responsive. A little bit slower than the other scope, I think, but not too bad. The waveform is quite nice because of the high number of bits and very good uh, resolution. Let's see if we can look, zoom in close to the top. Um, you know, the controls on this are a little bit more cumbersome than a regular oscilloscope, but it's not too much of a problem because you would usually. Uh, think carefully through what you're going to record when you're using a chart recorder like this. It's not sort of for exploratory, not so much for exploratory stuff like debugging. I think we should do this. You have to you can zoom in. You can set an offset. Now we can move it down to the center. Then we can set a gain. 
gain of 10. They still have really good uh, resolution. Let's go up even higher. And now we're starting to see the noise at 1.25 volts per division. That is really good. This also has uh, history memory just like the other Yokogawa scope. Press stop and then press uh, history. You can then go back in acquisitions and see what the waveform was like previously, or you can view all of the, accumulate them all. Unfortunately, I don't believe this scope has um, a graded intensity display, which would have been very nice when you're recording large amounts of data. Actually, this does have sort of a greater intensity. It has an accumulate uh, function, but it's not quite as fast as a uh, regular oscilloscope. Let's actually try using this as a chart recorder now. Turn the uh, time for division up. And it's in roll mode, so now, we, now we're recording. Some weird aliasing going on, or my line voltage is changing asymmetrically, which I don't think it is. See if we can fix that. Hmm. Let's try zooming in and see what happens. Let's zoom. Hmm. Well, it's probably because the sample rate is too low, so let's try turning that up. Uh, turn the record length up, that'll help. I think this unit um, I think it has 100, 250 meg points of memory. Uh, you can get them up to 2 gig points, I think. And you can record to the external hard drive for more. Let's just see what we can do now. And the 250 is shared between all the channels, so if you use more channels, you have to decrease the record length. Now we can stop it and try zooming in again. better. I think we can also set it to m the input module can take the RMS of the voltage, at least the HV module can, I don't think the other ones can. But now that's a straight line representing the RMS, so let's see if we can trend the change in line voltage over time. Just set the offset, set it to 120, now we can turn the scaling up. And that's all done digitally after the data is recorded, all the scaling, so you can change that after, you're, after you've recorded it. And just offset a bit because our line voltage is a little bit higher than 120. Yes, so you can see we're at 0.5 volts per division. You can see the line voltage changes. If I Turn on a heater over here. You should be able to see. This is on a different circuit. You should be able to see the uh, line voltage change. Yes, there it goes. As the heater warms up, it draws a bit more power. Yeah, if you turn it off, it should go back up. I think if we set, play around with some of the uh, filtering, it has some decent bandwidth, a little bit, not like, nothing like the uh, DL2000, DLM2000, which has a, a huge uh, range of bandwidth limits. This is not too bad. It doesn't really cut much the noise, unfortunately. Let's try something uh, a little bit more difficult to measure. Let's measure some more, some do some more measurements on this. Uh, motor inverter. Okay, this is hooked up to the inverter now. Um, these two channels, uh, the isolated ones, go to the high and low uh, uh, gate drive outputs so that one of them is floating. Um, Threaten two more channels on the cr uh, current sense outputs. 
and also uh, sits on the bus voltage. It's just in a roll right now, so let's start it running. Stop it. That works pretty well, just like the uh, DLM uh, scope I reviewed before. But it's really this is not really so good for debugging, general purpose debugging, because it lacks uh, graded intensity. I think this is more uh, something you'd leave running uh, when you're looking for a problem, and then you'd set it up to trigger uh, when you have a problem, then you could zoom in and see what happened. Let's see if we can do that. For example, I think we can set it to trigger when the bus voltage drops right here. and We should be able to take that at a higher uh, sample rate. So let's see if we can set that up. I was just trying to set up the uh, math function to try to reconstruct the uh, third phase current from the other two by adding the two and inverting, but unfortunately you can only, the math only works on the first uh, one meg point, so we only get that small portion at the beginning. It would be nicer if we could uh, form math over a wider waveform, although it would take a while, it would slow down the uh, update rates, but it would be nice to be able to compute that uh, later on, even if it took a while. Anyway, back to the, uh, trying to make it trigger. I have to turn on this dual capture mode. And set the uh, trigger to look at channel 9. And that's trigger. Trigger's a bit annoying. You don't have a trigger knob on this one. You have to actually type in a number or change it. Let's just type in. Uh, we have we're at 40 volts, it will trigger when it goes below 30. And falling edge. And I think we just set it to normal mode. Let's see if that runs. And it's complaining. I think to use this you have to set it to roll mode basically. Turn down the. Well, it has to be below 100 kilosamples per second. There we go. Yeah, so basically the main has to be in a roll, and the dual capture window is triggered on the main uh, trigger. And there we go, it seems to have got that. Although the, it's not scaled particularly well. Let's try changing that. Let's try 10 milliseconds per division. I think we should be able to capture multiple occurrences. And then go back and look at them. Yes, so we can go back and look at each occurrence, which is a very nice feature zoom out, there we can actually see. We can go back in time and look at all the different events, which is very nice. And you can, of course, the overview still works. You can go look in the main window, although the sample rate is relatively low. We're not going to be able to get much detail on the uh, gate drives. Here's a view of the uh, dead time between the high and low uh, gate drive signals. Um, 100 mega sample per second rate and 20 megahertz bandwidth of that the fastest module is decent, but not quite enough for actually doing any measurements here. But you, you can at least see uh, how, uh, but see what the dead time is. But you can't really measure the rise times accurately. The uh, bandwidth isn't sufficient for that. Let's just turn off the. Uh, um, where is it? Let's turn off the point to connect. You can see. A decent number of samples. Let's zoom in a bit. There we go. Yeah, you can't really see that edge properly. So you, you really need a separate oscilloscope uh, to do that. Okay, let's try something different now. Let's try a long duration measurement. I'm going to hook this up to measure the uh, power draw of the heat pump and we'll see how much uh, energy it uses over a day. 
Okay, this is set up now. Uh, this little uh, thing on the back for putting it in this position actually is actually quite handy. You can uh, get to it perfectly when standing up. Uh, anyway, I've got the uh, current probe measuring both current from the heat pump and the air handler. Um, voltage probe connected up to a breaker here. And that's all set up and running. It's recording to the hard drive at uh, 5 kilosamples per second. It was about 50 hours recording. And the dual capture is set to trigger on a current spike. Uh, the spike on the input current to try to capture whenever it turns on, whenever the compressor turns on at a higher sample rate. So we'll see uh, how that goes. Okay, it's been running for over a day now, and here's what it's captured. And it's worked beautifully. We have the entire, uh, over 24 hours worth, say, sampled at 5 kilosamples per second. So we can go in and zoom in and look at some of these. We can look at here where the compressor turned on. A little bit slow zooming in, but I think I can forgive it for that because there's billions of points saved. Has to read from the hard drive. There we go. Let's see, this is at I think 20, no, 50 amps per division. So, you know, the compressor draws something like 100 amps RMS during startup for about 300 or 400 milliseconds or so. And let's see also what the uh, dual capture got. That should have uh, captured every turn on. Let's just zoom out on this. Yep, and now let's go through the list. Yep, there's every single turn on of the compressor sampled at um, how fast did we sample? 100 kilosamples per second. I think we can see. Uh, how <coughs> the compressor contactor always turns on at zero crossing. So let's uh, zoom in a little bit. Yes, so now if we switch through them, it appears that the contactor always closes at zero crossings, which I believe is what the uh, heat pump manual, the control board manual says it does. And this is the type of application where a uh, scope quarter like this really comes into its own, where you can record a very long duration, relatively low sample rates, and then sample certain events at high speed so you can see what's actually going on. So, what's the final verdict on the Yokogawa DL850 scope quarter? Well, it has excellent input options. You can measure pretty much anything you want, and with 16 or more analog channels, depending on which card you use, hopefully you can see all the signals you want to see. I especially like the uh, dual capture feature that allows you to sample the bulk of the waveform at a low sample rate and sample small uh, parts of it at high, at high speed to see uh, uh, fast transients. This unit has an excellent on-screen help feature so you don't need to go to the manual to find out information on what all the controls do, so big thumbs up there. On the downside, scrolling through waveforms captured on the hard drive is a little bit slow, but that's understandable given the large amount of data that it has to process. Um, the only thing I found in this instrument that really annoyed me was the uh, inability to perform math on more than one meg point, and the complete inability to perform uh, math functions on uh, hard drive, uh, data recorded to the hard drive. Hopefully they could fix that in the software update, and yes, it would take a long time to uh, do any sort of math functions on billions of points, but taking a long time is better than uh, being unable to do it at all. So, taking everything into account, I give the DL850 a 4 out of 5. I hope you found this review interesting. Thanks for watching.